Nos wyth a, a chroeso i noson wobrwyo ymddiriadolaeth gwestiynaethau uh, Ambulance Cymru 2022. Hello, a very good evening and welcome to the 2022 WAST Awards. Uh, my name is Mark James. By day, I'm a broadcaster and continuity announcer for BBC Wales. By night, I'm a community first responder. And this evening, I'm the host of the WAST Awards. Uh, you're all very welcome wherever you're watching this evening. And if you want to interact with us, uh, please do so on social media using the hashtag WAST Awards 2022. And hopefully I'll be referring to them as the evening goes on. Uh, you might incidentally remember me from such videos as donning and doffing, PPE level two and level three. Um, my apologies. It's set to be another great WAST Awards this evening uh, to recognize and celebrate uh, the very lifeblood of the Welsh Ambulance Service, its people. And to formally welcome you this evening, uh, I'd like to invite the new WAST Chair, Colin Dennis, to say a few words. Colin. Um, good evening, Mark, and good evening to everybody. Um, as Mark has said, I am indeed the new chair, a couple of months into the role now, and all the better results. And it is my very sincere pleasure to welcome you all to what I believe is the seventh of these national awards, and I believe it's the third time that it's been held virtually. Um, there have been over 250 nominations submitted, of course, a dozen candidates that have been resigned to celebrate colleagues in every part of the service and of course, from every part of Wales. We would like to thank all of those who took part to submit nominations and to cast a vote. And we want to say a huge congratulations to all of those who made the shortlist. The calibre of nominations, as always, was superb. And whilst everyone is, of course, a worthy winner in our eyes, tonight's finalists really are the best of the best. As well as our category awards, we will also be presenting the Gail Williams Award for Clinical Excellence. And we're especially delighted that the Williams family have joined us virtually this evening. We'll also look back to the many and various external awards which colleagues have won this year. And we'll also pause for a moment to reflect on those members we have lost. Our Chief Executive, Jason Killins, will be saying a few words later in the evening but I know that he would want to join with me in sharing our view that it is an absolute privilege to be a part of this organisation. And I very much hope that all of you watching over the next hour and a half, whether you're a colleague, whether you're a member of the public, whether you're a partner or maybe a stakeholder, I hope that you will all feel that same sense of pride. So I wish you all a very pleasant evening. I will speak to you again at the end of the evening. And I'm now going to hand you back to our host, back to Mark. Thank you, Colin. So let's get to the first of our awards this evening, and it's the Emergency Medical Service Award. Uh, to present the award is the Executive Director of Medical and Clinical Services for WAST, Dr. Brendan Lloyd. Brendan. Good evening, Mark, and hello, everyone. So this award is for a team or individual who has gone above and beyond in their role in the Emergency Medical Service, which is the blue light arm of what we do, getting help to very unwell patients as quickly as possible. It could be enabling quality improvements, providing exceptional patient care, or simply delivering excellence in all that they do. Let's take a look at the shortlist. For this award, there are three winners, one for each region. So the winner of the Emergency Medical Service Award in the North region is a paramedic, Scott Timbrell.
destination spot, very well deserved. And the winner in the central and west region is our health board clinical lead, Hugh Jackson. Congratulations, Hugh, for being uh, exceptional work, uh, very well deserved award. And finally, the winner in the South and East region is uh, our senior paramedic, Will Hedges. I recommended Will Hedges, Vale Senior Paramedic, for this award because of his devotion to pre hospital emergency care. He always displays commitment over and above the call of duty, demonstrated on this day of question where he responded to this good SAM app, led this resuscitation and remained with the patient to definitive care at hospital, even though a full EMS response had been provided. He could have returned home to his family, but will always put the patient first. He demonstrates service before self. He does so much to support the service, the staff and the local community with his clinical support, that I feel he's so very deserving of this award. Again, congratulations, Will, and congratulations uh, to everyone in this category. And a special mention to Wayne Stevens, uh, a paramedic, who's being highly commended for being a fantastic mentor to newly qualified paramedics. So congratulations, Wayne. Back to you, Mark. Thank you, Brendan. Congratulations to all our winners in that category. Uh, next is the Non-Emergency Patient Transport Service Awards. And for this, I'd like to invite our Executive Director of Operations, Lee Brooks, to the virtual stage. Good evening, Lee. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, everybody. Our non-emergency patient transport service supports patients who need transport to and from their routine appointments at clinics, hospitals and day centres across Wales. Mm -hmm. Our dedicated crews make around 700,000 journeys every year, and this award recognises those who've gone above and beyond in that role. So let's take a look at the shortlist. I'm thrilled to announce that the winner of the Non-Emergency Patient Transport Service Award in the Central and West region is Craig Figures, Operational Team Leader. I know me to Craig, not just for his excellent work as an operational team leader, but also for the other things he does above and beyond his role, such as being one of the key leads in our fleet redesign programme, often giving up time to research and identify the best solutions for our new vehicles, and supporting our wish vehicles, often in his own time, identifying vehicles and other logistical requirements to support wishes, and many, many other things. Completely committed, caring and passionate individual. Thank you, Craig. We'd also like to give a special mention to Callum Palin, Planner Controller, who's highly commended for going the extra mile to support his colleagues in net control. The winner in the South and East region is Caitlin Holby, Ambulance Care Assistant.
Congratulations, Caitlin, and also to Kelly Baker, supervisor, who's being highly commended for the fantastic support that she gives to colleagues and in particular, our new recruits. And finally, the third and final award for the work that he does, Pan Wales, goes to Quality Assurance Manager, Lyndon Powell. I nominated Lyndon Powell for a WAST award for the work he's done to transform our approach to quality assurance across a non-emergency transport service. His dedication and commitment to this agenda has meant that the services we deliver for our patients are now much safer, more regulated and better quality than they've ever been. Thank you, Lyndon. Congratulations to everyone and back to you, Mark. Diofli, thank you. Congratulations again to our award winners in the NEPS category. Next up is the Clinical Contact Centre Award, and here to present it is the Executive Director of Strategy, Performance and Planning, Rachel Marsh. Rachel. Thanks very much, Mark, uh, and it's great to be here this evening. Uh, good evening. So when people think about the ambulance service, it is often colleagues who work on the uh, road who spring to mind. Um, but what they don't realise is that we've got a huge team of people in our control rooms working just as hard to triage the calls and coordinate our response. So this award recognises a team or an individual who's excelled in that clinical contact centre setting. Let's take a look at the shortlist. Thank you for that. Um, so I'm delighted to announce that the winner of the Clinical Contact Centre Award in the North region is Jessica Hamlet, Site Manager for NHS 111 Wales. Just in the interim role as 11 Site Manager in the North has shown exemplary leadership and engagement qualities over the last year whilst in post. During this time, she has gone over and beyond the call of duty to ensure the optimal balance between staff needs and well-being with that of service delivery requirements. Jess's success has been attributed to a high level of engagement with staff and others to ensure the site runs smoothly and effectively. An example of this is the relocation of the North Clinical Contact Centre at TL in Tassel. In July this year, one service, Clinical Desk and BCU Health Force staff relocated to a new designed CCC downstairs area. Whilst involved in this development and the relocation, Jess ensured staff needs and their feedback formed the shape of the new CCC. Jess regularly updated all the staff on the development through communication updates involving them in all aspects of the layout. Having a strong well-being, culture and behaviours focus, Jess has shown herself to be a hugely capable leader which continues to enable our people to be their best. Well done Jess. Congratulations Jess but also to Gina Hughes, Senior Clinician, who's been highly commended for supporting colleagues throughout the rollout of the one one to one service. So the next one, the winner in the Central and West region is Chris Jones, Clinical Contact Centre Systems Administrator. Chris Jones is an integral link in digital innovation projects across the Trust supporting multiple directorates. Whilst his role is to administer the EMS coordination CAD system, he does so much more. In recent months, he supported the development, testing and improvement systems across the EPCR project, the ESMCP project, Charu Innovation, Falls and Frailty, CFRs, UFRs and GoodSAM, to name but a few. Chris is the go-to person across the Trust for integration with the EMS critical systems. He doesn't do this for the recognition, he does it because he loves his job. He wants to improve the systems for the staff who use them and he wants to improve the services that we provide to our patients in any way that he can. Every department across the Trust will have looked to Chris for support at some point as his reputation far exceeds the high regard in which all in EMS coordination hold him. 
Chris has never been acknowledged for the outstanding work he does and the visionary application of systems to ensure that we get over the line and deliver innovative projects to improve our systems of work. I can't think of anyone who deserves recognition more. Congratulations, Chris. Uh, and a special mention as well, though, to Leslie Evans, clinical manager, who's being highly commended for her innovative leadership and her work to continually improve the 111 service. So finally, the winner in the South and East region is Chloe Walkley, Clinical Contact Centre Trainer. Chloe is an integral part of the CCC LND team. She is passionate, knowledgeable and constantly striving to improve the training we provide. Nothing is too much work or too difficult. It's always whatever is best for our colleagues. Aside from the great work she produces, Chloe is always putting her colleagues first. Uh, do whatever it takes to support them as a peer supporter or jump on to take travel line calls. In her spare time, she's also a CFR. Uh, most recently, she's been recognised on the national stage for her work on moral injury, helping to lead the way on how Nana and I call handlers are supported. I truly believe Chloe deserves to be recognised for her efforts, as she regularly shies away from praise, believing she's doing more, no more than what's required. Honestly, this could not be further from the truth. Well done, Chloe. And also to Scott Davis, dispatcher, who's being highly commended for excelling in his role and for his drive and ambition to be the best he can be. Uh, a great three winners and what great uh, acknowledgements from colleagues there uh, for all of you. So back to you, Mark. Thank you, Rachel, and well done again all, um, especially to Chris in my neck of the woods for his support for CFRs over the years. Well done all. Um, next up is the Support Services Award, and here to present it is the Board Secretary. Secretary Trish Mills. Trish. Diok uh, Mark. Hi everyone, Noswai Tha. Uh, as an ambulance service, we couldn't function without our support services from finance to fleet, ICT to estates, research to risk management, communications to counter fraud and more. There's a whole raft of colleagues behind the scenes who keep the wheels turning on our ambulance service. This award is for a team or individual not directly involved with patients, but whose exemplary work supports those who are. Let's take a look at the shortlist. And I'm pleased to announce that the winner of the Support Services Award in the North Region is Catherine Wynne Lloyd, the Organisational Development Project Support Officer. Catherine has absolutely thrived in her current role and we are incredibly proud of her. Her hard work and involvement with really important projects such as WAST Carers, a range of different wellbeing initiatives, the equality, diversity and inclusion agenda, the cost of living crisis support and much more. Catherine deserves after 20 years service to be recognised for her continued dedication to providing our people with the best possible experience of Team West. Well done, Catherine. And a shout out to Thomas Hughes, the defibrillator support officer who's also been highly commended for helping the people of North Wales install life-saving defibrillators in their communities. Uh, the winner of the Central and West region is Wendy Herbert, Assistant Director of Quality and Nursing. I'm nominating Wendy for this award because simply put, she's been incredible uh, for the whole organisation over the last year. Uh, not only did she support my predecessor, uh, but when Claire left, Wendy took on the interim role. She supported the board, the exec management team, the wider quality, safety, patient experience team, uh, and really ensured that we did everything we could to protect our patients over the very challenging months that, that she was in the role. 
it's also fair to say that uh, my coming in from outside of Wales, Wendy has been uh, incredibly supportive. Uh, she's helped me navigate uh, the different systems. She has always been there to have a conversation, to think about how we might do things, how we might uh, learn from other areas, never closed off, but also a wise counsel in those moments where maybe you have a thought, you want to do something, and, and actually there's something about recognizing what's gone before uh, and understanding what may or may not work for, for lots of different reasons. brother Wendy uh, and also to Rebecca Whitmore our Director of Services Development Officer and Sean Jones our Directory of Services uh, Administrator the formidable pair uh, who are highly commended for their work to develop maintain and continually continually improve 111's Directory of Service and finally the winner in the South and East region is Ian McMurtry our Project Support Officer Uh, congratulations, Ian, uh, and also to our highly commended colleagues, Pima Richards, who's our resource manager who works tirelessly to ensure our staffing needs are met, um, and Annabelle Harry, our project manager for coordinating the implementation of our new telephone triage support system. Back to you, Nama. Diolch Trish, uh, well done, everybody. Uh, we turn now to the Team of the Year Awards, and to present this award is the Non-Executive Director and Vice Chair of WAST, Dr. Kevin Davis. Kevin. Thank you, Mark. Um, the, the coveted Team of the Year Award is designed to recognise the team from anywhere across the Trust uh, that has demonstrated excellence within the organisation and or with external partners. Uh, the team must clearly demonstrate across directorate working, along with good team cohesion. So let's have a look at the short list. formidable competition. Um, I'm thrilled to announce that the winner of the team of the year is the Clinical Contact Center Concerns Team. I've nominated the CCC Concerns Team for the Team of the Year Award because they work tirelessly every day to find answers for complainants and staff members um, with the concerns that they've raised. Um, they all come to work each day with a smile on their faces despite their own personal struggles and have been the most supportive team I've ever been part of. Um, they also support other teams around them and I feel like they deserve this award um, to get some of the recognition they deserve. Huge congratulations and a special mention to the clinical support test team who might be commended in this category for the manner of pronouncement they've done uh, in introducing the new telephone triage uh, support system. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Kevin. Um, before our next uh, award presentation, just to say we've got around 180 viewers on Zoom and Facebook, and there are lots of good luck and congratulations messages already flooding in. If you want to congratulate your colleagues, please do so using the hashtag 
uh, WAST Awards 2022, and we'll try and read some of them out uh, before the end of the awards this evening. So then, moving on to the Learning and Innovation Award, to present that award is the Interim Director of Digital, Dr. Leanne Smith. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Mark. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, the Learning and Innovation Award recognises a team or individual with a forward-thinking approach, those who generate new ideas which deliver improvement and add value to what we do. So here's your short list. I'm delighted to announce that the winner of the Learning and Innovation Award is Elizabeth Price, Derry Edwards and the one on one Quality Safety and Patient Experience Team. I've nominated this group for their imaginative work, particularly around the loud noise incidents that we've had and that we've suffered with. They've analysed, taken some ideas, run with some ideas, implemented the ideas, mainly around staff welfare and for our patients through what was reported previously as a loud noise. They've been imaginative and the quality they've delivered on has been phenomenal. That's fantastic and well deserved. Um, we'd also like to just give a special shout out to the one on one trainers, Stephanie Einan and Vivian Disbury, who are highly commended for being such inspiring training instructors. Uh, so, congratulations to you. Thanks, Leanne. Our next award then is the Inspiring Others Award. And for this, I'll hand you to the Director of Workforce and Organisational Development, Angie Lewis. Angie. Thank you, Mark, and hi, everyone. Lovely to be here tonight. The Inspiring Others Award quite simply recognises a team of individuals, a team or individuals who motivates and inspires others to be their best. Let's take a look at the shortlist. And the winner of the Inspiring Others Award in the North Region is William Dovey Evans, Emergency Medical Technician. I've had the good fortune to know and work alongside Tony for a number of years, both operationally and within the Special Operations remit. I've always found him to be a seriously encouraging, supportive uh, member of the team, not only to me but also to the new ones that join our special operations team. He's skilled in the, all the disciplines within SORT and is one of the SORT operational leads and I simply couldn't do my job like I do without him. Thank you. Lovely. Congratulations William or Tony to his friends and a special mention to our highly commended finalist Linda Williams, Community First Responder Administrator who goes above and beyond to support volunteers in North Wales and whose loyalty knows no bounds. Moving on, the winner in the Central and West region is Callum Palin, Planner Controller.
Well done, Callum. And also to our highly commended colleagues, Nicola White, Head of Health and Safety, and Graham Stockford, Deputy Head of Health and Safety, who've inspired others to take ownership of their own health and safety. Finally, the winner of the Inspiring Others Award of the South and East Region is Fee Kaue, Trainee Emergency Medical Technician. Congratulations, Fee, and also to Natalie Jenkins, National Delivery Manager, our highly commended colleague who strives for excellence on a daily basis, embodies the trust behaviours and is a role model to others. Back to you, Mark. Thanks, Angie. Uh, before our next award, some of the congratulations messages coming in on social media uh, from Kins Glaive. Well done to Beck and Shani, highly commended superstars and proud in capital letters. Uh, from Claire Addy, congratulations to Rebecca Whitmore and Sean Jones. I'm exceptionally proud of you both. And from Abby Howells, well done to Dewi, Liz and co! Exclamation mark. So keep your congratulations messages coming in using that hashtag WAST Awards 2022. So then to the Great Listener Award next, and here to present it is the non-executive director, Kerry Jackson. Kerry. Hey, Mark, and good evening, everyone. A great privilege to be here. So the Great Listener Award recognises a team or individual who provides exemplary support to colleagues and patients alike, going above and beyond to care for those around them. Let's take a look at the shortlist. And I'm thrilled to announce that the winner of the Great Listener Award in the North Region is Sharnad Ashworth, Call Handler Coordinator for 111. I have nominated Sharnad Ashworth for the Great Listener Award because in her role as a 111 Call Handler Coordinator, she's gone above and beyond to support her colleagues' wellbeing and to support them when staying in work. She really has grown to become an inspiring leader. This year, Sean had spent several weeks assisting a colleague when they were suffering with poor mental health. When this colleague fed back to me, they described how Sean had, had been their backbone. She had listened intently, shown empathy, and had adapted her communication style whenever it was needed. Dawn Pochin, Senior Nurse Advisor, is also highly commended for being an inspirational manager and creating a workplace environment in which her team can really thrive. And the winner in the Central and West region is Ruth Davis, 111 Call Handler Coordinator. I am delighted to have put forward Ruth Davis for the Great Listener Award 2022. Ruth is a fantastic role model and an excellent listener who is highly thought of in 111. Ruth is also heavily involved in the Works Fundraising Group, communicating effectively with colleagues to agree fundraising events, and she does fantastic work. She is a great person to have working in the contact centre and respected by all. And I would like to thank Ruth for the support she provides to me and our teams. And locality manager Katrin Convery is also highly 
commended for being an amazing source of support to colleagues and leading a sympathetic ear, lending a sympathetic ear in times of need. And finally, the, the winner of the Great Listener Award in the South and East region is Elan Roberts, call taker supervisor. And a special mention to Rhiannon Roynon, Clinical Support Desk Locality Manager, who's highly commended for the exceptional support she provides to colleagues and for her compassion and understanding day or night. Huge congratulations. Well done, everyone. And back to you, Mark. Thank you, Kerry. Yes, well done to all our winners in that category. Uh, another message we've had in from social media from Paul Greatrex. So proud of the 111 team and training team that support us. Well done to you all. So then to our next award, the Welsh Language Award, and to present this award is the non-executive director, Bethan Evans. Noswitha, Bethan, a chroeso i'r llwyfan digidol. Noswitha, Mark. Ac mae'n yn rhydedd llwyr i mi gyflwyno'r bob yr hon. Good evening, Mark. And it's an absolute honour for me to present this award. Cyflwynir Gwobr y Gymraeg i unigolyn ei dîm sydd wedi cael effaith sylweddol i gleifion, cydweithwyr neu'r gymuned a hangach trwy gyfrwng y Gymraeg. The Welsh Language Award is presented to an individual or team who has made a significant impact to patients, colleagues or the wider community through the medium of the Welsh Language. Gydewch chi'n i edrych ar y rhestr fer. Let's take a look at the shortlist. Ac yn ysllu the Wobr Gymraeg eleni yw, and the winner of this year's Welsh Language Award is Terry Douglas. Clinigydd ar y Ddesg Llyn Cymorth Clinigol, Clinical Support Desk Clinician. Mae Ceri yn aseg gwyll ar y Ddesg Gymroedd Gynunigol. Mae yn cael ein brisbynau cleifion yn y iaith gyntaf yn arbennig gan y bod galluogau'r cleifion i'r ymlacio. Adeladu ym mrydredd ar clu bythynias, mae gweud hyn yn galluogi Ceri i gwahabau y sadau clinigol da. Kerry is an asset to us on the clinical support desk and having her able to triage patients in the first language is fantastic as it enables the patient to relax, gain trust and build that rapport to ensure a good clinical assessment. Diawn Kerry, hoffem long gyfarch a rhoi cymerydoeth uchel i'n cydweithwyr. Cynigydd y ganolfan gyswllt gynigol ni y barton, derbynydd galwadau Ellen Jones, Hyfforddwr y Marfer, Nia Donovan, a derbynnu'r galwadau, Kelly Louise Evans, a mae hymdrechion i hyrwyddo'r Gymraeg hefyd. We would also like to congratulate our highly commended colleagues, Clinical Contact Centre Clinician, Nia Barton, Call Handler, Ellen Jones, Practice Coach, Nia Donovan, and Call Handler, Kelly Louise Evans, for their efforts to promote the Welsh language too. Diolch Bethan, Llongwarchiadau Ceri a pawb ar y rhestr fyr. Two more messages then coming in from Philip Jones. Well done to Tony. Huge congratulations, fully deserved. And congratulations to Chris. Well done. And from the Maesteg Community First Responder team, huge congratulations to Chris and thank you for everything you do for us. And that leads me very nicely into the next category, in fact, the next four awards, uh, which uh, re reflects the sterling contribution made by the WAST volunteers 
of which I'm one and I couldn't be more proud. Almost 600 volunteers give up their time to support the ambulance service in Wales, including 460 community first responders and 110 volunteer car service drivers. Community first responders are volunteers who attend 999 calls and administer first aid in the precious first minutes before an ambulance arrives. Volunteer car service drivers use their own vehicles to transport people to routine hospital appointments, including dialysis, oncology, and outpatient appointments. Last year, we launched our first volunteer strategy, which sets out how volunteers will be better integrated into the workforce and better supported to deliver the role. What better way to seal that commitment than with a couple of brand new awards for our volunteers? To kick us off with the Community First Responder of the Year Award, in memory of Dr. Jennifer Bucknell, its non-executive director, Martin Turner. Martin. Martin not with us? In that case, who would like to I, present I, I, this award? I think we may have lost uh, Martin there, Mark. So should I pick this up um, on, on behalf of Martin? Uh, yes, please, and, Jason, um, go ahead. And take okay. us forward. Um, so the Jennifer Bucknell, uh, Jennifer Bucknell was a 23-year-old community first responder who was studying medicine in Cardiff when she died from an undiagnosed heart condition in 2011, three weeks before her final exams. This award in her memory is presented to a community first responder who's displayed excellence in the pre-hospital field or has demonstrated outstanding contribution or commitment to their community. Let's take a look at the shortlist. And I'm thrilled to announce that the uh, Community First Responder of the Year Award goes to Vaughan Richardson. Congratulations, Vaughan, and to our highly commended colleague, Gareth Goth, a radiographer at the Princess of Wales Hospital by day and a CFR with us by night. Colleagues say Gareth is a remarkable and dedicated healthcare professional who always goes above and the extra mile to support WAS colleagues on scene, as well as being a neighbor, as well as being as neighboring CFR schemes. Well done, Gareth, and back to you, Mark. Thanks very much, Jason, and thanks for stepping up at such short notice, and well done to our three shortlisted candidates, but particularly to Vaughan, well done. Uh, so to the Community First Responder Team of the Year Award, and here to present it is non-executive director, Hannah Rowan. Hannah. Mark. Uh, thank you very much, and it means a great deal to present this award this evening. Last year, community first responders attended more than 14,000 emergencies in Wales, arriving at the scene of the most serious red calls in an average of just seven minutes. This award, like the previous, is for a CFR team which has displayed excellence in the pre-hospital field or has demonstrated outstanding contribution or commitment to their community. Let's take a look at the shortlist. Thank you. 
and I'm thrilled to announce that the Community First Responder Team of the Year Award goes to the Tenby and South Pembrokeshire CFR team. It was a total no-brainer for me nominated the Tenby and South Pem CFR team for the CFR Team of the Year Award. An amazing group of people who are really conscientious and proactive in their work. They're always forward thinking and looking to set up new initiatives and they support WAST in so many different ways. Just this weekend alone, we're supported by three of their team at a big recruitment event. Uh, thank you very much for all you do for the people of Pembroke. We also want to say Shangvachyadai Maur. A big congratulations to the Fairborn CFR team who were highly commended, not only for providing excellent care to patients in Gwynedd, but for providing CPR training to the community. Congratulations all and back to you, Mark. Thank you, Hannah, and congratulations to my colleagues from Tenby, to Ben and the team. Very well done. Next then is the Volunteer Car Driver of the Year Award and to, here to present that award is the Executive Director of Finance and Corporate Resources, Chris Turley. Chris. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> Good evening all. Our Volunteer Car Service is an important cog in the wheel of the non-emergency service. Last year, Volunteer Car Drivers made 56,000 journeys across Wales and covered more than half a million miles. This award is presented to a driver whose selfless commitment has made a life-changing difference to the communities that they serve. Let's take a look at the shortlist. I'm thrilled to announce that the winner of this year's Volunteer Car Driver of the Year Award is Margaret Wright. Well done, Maggie. We also have to mention Peter Lorry, uh, a volunteer of 12 years, whose colleagues say is a hardworking, caring and patient focused member of the team. And George Lawrence, whose colleagues say is everything a volunteer should be, and who frequently works late and on weekends to get patients where they need to be. Congratulations all. And back to you, Mark. Thank you, Chris. Congratulations, Maggie, and also to Peter and to George for your nominations. So then to the final award of four, which recognizes uh, the contribution made by volunteers to WAST is the Volunteer of the Year Award. And uh, we've already heard from him once this evening, but back again to present this award is the Executive Director of Operations, Lee Brooks. Lee. Yeah, Mark. This award is presented to a volunteer who has gone beyond the call of duty in the past year, demonstrating outstanding contribution or commitment to their community. Let's take a look at the short list. So I'm delighted to announce that he's made it a double this award season, not only Cardiff's Volunteer Coordinator of the Year, but also our Volunteer of the Year, Community First Responder, Roger Marshall. I've nominated Roger Marshall for Volunteer of the Year Award. I'm pretty sure Roger has community spirit entwined in his DNA. He's not only an active volunteer within his local community, but he finds so much time to support WAST in many ways. 
Roger goes above and beyond as an active community first responder, he's a mentor to other volunteers, he supports my team with volunteer training, he works with Pecky through Shoptober and other community engagement activities, he volunteers within the CCC and he's a valued member of our volunteer steering group. Roger exemplifies all of our WAST behaviours and we're truly grateful for all of the support that he offers to WAST. That's why I've nominated him for Volunteer of the Year Award. And uh, we would also like to commend community first responder Nick Dart for being a devoted volunteer in Maysteg on top of her full time employment and in particular for single handedly raising funds and installing no less than 21 defibrillators in her community in the last two years. Congratulations to Roger and Nick and of course from all of us a huge dioch thank you to all of our volunteers. Thank you Lee. Congratulations to Roger and to Nick, two CFRs I know well. Well done to both of you. Before our next award, a couple more messages coming in on social media of congratulations from Karis Meyer Baker. Gareth Goff is amazing, a super proud niece. And also from Mel O'Connor. Congratulations to Catherine Wynne Lloyd, a truly well deserved uh, award. So thank you for your messages coming in. We should hopefully be able to squeeze a few more in before the end of the awards ceremony. Remember the hashtag WAST Awards 2022. We turn now to the People's Choice Award and here to present that award is the Director of Partnerships and Engagement, Estelle Hitchin. Estelle. Hello, Mark. Thanks, Mark. And Nosifa Pau, good evening, everybody. And I hope you're enjoying tonight's event as much as we are. The People's Choice Award is unique because nominations have been submitted solely by the public. This award is for a Welsh Ambulance Service or 111 Wales team or individual who quite simply has provided excellent care. Let's take a look at the shortlist. I'm delighted to announce that this year's People's Choice Award goes to Emergency Medical Technician Erica Davis. Hi, and I'm today Erica Davis. She saved the life of one of our local residents in a small village called Tanagrisha. Without Erica's intervention, quick intervention, he, he would not be alive today, and I think she thoroughly deserves the award. Fantastic story there. I think you'll agree. So well deserved, Erica. But we'd also like to give a really special mention to paramedic Anna Marie Taylor, who is highly commended for being an amazing paramedic with a kind heart and who is as popular with colleagues as she is with her patients. So, Shanga Bachyadai, Erica, and Anna Marie. And uh, over to you, Mark. Dioch Estelle and Slangabarchiadai to Erica and Anna-Marie um, for uh, the win and the nomination in that category. Uh, we've also heard from Pete Brown on social media, who is exceptionally proud of Jess, her achievements, but most importantly, her hugely positive impact on our 111 people and service we offer to, offer to patients. So Pete, thank you for your message. As we move on to the Public Recognition Award, and to present that award is the Executive Director of Quality and Nursing, Liam Williams. Good evening, Liam. Good evening, Mark. Sorry, I couldn't get off mute, my fault. Um, so good evening, welcome everybody. Um, the WAS celebrate fantastic work of all of our people, and it's also important we recognise the members of the community who have helped their fellow citizens. The Public Recognition Award is designed to do just that. As an ambulance service, we know better than anyone the difference that a defibrillator can make. And it's, and it's thanks to the tremendous efforts of groups like the recipients of this award that there are more people who survive a cardiac arrest. I'm thrilled to announce uh, that the winner of the award is the Tony Frail and Defach Goch Community Defibrillator Group. I have 
nominated Ton Rebel and Gilver Core Community Defibrillators Group for the awareness of their outstanding commitment to the community. I believe they deserve to win due to the free courses they put on the community and raise awareness in the surrounding areas. They've attended schools, community centres in many areas to spread the awareness. The volunteers have raised a large sum of money to fund the cost and upkeep of the defibrillators. They've put over 40 defibrillators in the community and assisted with many more. This life-saving equipment is helping to keep our community safe and continue to save lives. Huge congratulations and uh, thank you. Back to you, Mark. Thanks, Liam. And um, thanks, my thanks to the My Stay Community First Responders who've said what a great host for WAST Awards 2022. Thank you, Nick. Uh, uh, so then, we move on to a very special award now, which is the Gail Williams Award, uh, which is sponsored by Mr. Michael Williams and his daughters, Megan and Sean Ed, in memory of his wife and their mother, Mrs. Gail Williams. We're delighted that the family are with us virtually this evening and the Director of Paramedicine, Andy Swinburne, will now announce the winner of this year's award, Andy. Thank you, Mark, and good evening, everyone. The Gail Williams Award recognise individuals or teams who've provided clinical excellence in the pre-hospital setting. The annual presentation of this award in Gail's memory reflects the trust's clinical excellence, innovative development and advances in patient care which Michael remains so passionate about. This year's nominations were of a truly high standard and each of the individuals and teams recommended to the shortlisting panel have been recognized for providing the very highest standards of care and assistance to patients. So after lengthy deliberation, Mr. Williams, Sean Ed and Megan concluded that one of the nominations stood out as being truly worthy of recognition for his quick thinking actions and expert skills to deliver and resuscitate a breech baby who wasn't breathing, this year's Gail Williams Award goes to Ross French, Advanced Paramedic Practitioner. Congratulations, Ross. And sticking with the theme of newborn babies, we'd also like to commend Di Boyne, senior paramedic, for the life-saving care he delivered to baby Hunter Harris of Swansea, who was born prematurely weighing just 700 grams. Colleagues say that Di's intervention and clinical competence, the outcome could have been very different. Congratulations, both. Thanks, Andy, and congratulations to both of you. Now, we've got two awards left to award this evening, but before we do, we're going to take a look back and celebrate the many and various external awards that colleagues have won in the past year. Let's take a look. Congratulations to all of you. Now, sadly, this year, we've also said goodbye to a number of our colleagues. Let's take a moment to remember those who are no longer with us and reflect on their legacy.
Our penultimate award of the evening is the Chairs Award. And as we're celebrating success from over the last 12 months, we thought it only fair that Martin Woodford, our chair from 2018 until September of this year, determines the winner of this special award. Martin, it's great to see you back. Thank, thank you, Mark. It's, uh, it's brilliant to be back too this evening. Um, the Chairs Award uh, recognised the, the value of working across teams and boundaries for the benefits of others, working in a way which helps other people, whoever they are and whatever their backgrounds. The recipient of the Chairs Award, as is also the case with the uh, Chief Executives Award, uh, has been handpicked from the many, many nominations uh, for the other category awards we've heard about this evening. And I felt personally that the sterling work of this particular individual uh, is highly deserving of extra recognition. She was in fact a category winner last year for, uh, under the Inspiring Others Award and also received three nominations this year for uh, a Great Lister Award as well. And having met her firsthand, it's clear uh, to see why uh, she should be considered. Because operational management is very difficult in these pressured times and is often overlooked. But this individual clearly lives the kind of supportive values that WAST is seeking to encourage. Her colleagues say that she is, quote, an amazing source of support who never fails to put a smile on people's faces and will pick up the phone when she's not in work, such is her commitment to being there for others. They say that she's gone from in quotes again, strength to strength in recent times since taking up her role and count themselves very lucky to have her as a, their leader. So I have the absolute honor on uh, this the last chair's award of mine uh, of announcing that the winner of the award this year is, and I turn the page over with drama, Katrine Convery, the locality manager for Keradigion. Congratulations, Katrine, very well deserved. Round of applause for me. Back to you, Mark. Thank you, Martin. And congratulations to you, Catherine, on your award. Before our final award, two more congratulations to squeeze in from Prodry Jones from Aberaeron. Many congratulations for Roger on the Volunteer of the Year Award. You're going to need a bigger trophy cabinet. And from Hazel Powell, congratulations to Wendy Herbert. Very well deserved on your award. So then to our final award of the evening. And uh, we heard from him uh, slightly unscheduled earlier on, but uh, here to present it in his own right is Chief Executive Jason Killens. Jason. That's great. Thank you, uh, Mark. Uh, firstly, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to those who took the time to submit a nomination or to cast a vote and say congratulations to our winners and highly commended colleagues. Tonight's an important occasion because it gives us an opportunity to recognise and celebrate the achievements of our people who work tirelessly 24-7 to serve the people of Wales. Being a member of Team WAST is not just any job, it's a job that makes a real difference. Often when people are at their lowest ebb, frightened, injured, vulnerable and sick, we're the people to whom they turn. And it takes remarkable people to do a job like this day in, day out. The phrase unprecedented has become somewhat of a cliche, but the last couple of years have been like nothing we've experienced before. It's been a period of unforeseen challenge, of sadness and tragedy, but also of great human resilience and commitment. Tonight, we celebrate everything that is great about this organisation, our organisation, and it gives me a perfect chance to simply say thank you. Two words that I know mean so much. That thank you also extends to your families, members of whom will be watching with you tonight and who support you every day to be your best, even when things are tough. I hope that hearing all about tonight's winners will give you a sense of, of the improvement journey we're on and help you inspire and go further. And now to the final award, my award, the Chief Executive's Award. The calibre of nominations this year was superb. And while everyone is a worthy winner, in my eyes, I had to decide on just one. This team came, this team, there's a clue there, this team came up again and again in the nominations, both for the significant expansion that they've undergone in the last year, 
and the effort to launch a new telephone triage support system uh, in the last couple of months. They're the control room clinicians helping patients get the right care in the right place at the right time, protecting our precious resources for those who need us most. So if you haven't guessed by now, I'm thrilled to announce that the winner of the 2022 Chief Executives Award is the Clinical Contact Centre Clinical Support Desk. Congratulations to the team on the Clinical Support Desk. Congratulations to all of tonight's winners and those highly commended. And Mark, back to you. Thank you, Jason. And thanks to you for watching and your comments and your congratulations that have come in to us here uh, this evening. It's been an absolute privilege to host this year's ceremony and to hear so many moving stories about the staff and volunteers who make up Team WAST. To formally close tonight's events, I'd like to call once again on the WAST chair, Colin Dennis. Colin. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you to all of the colleagues who've taken part this evening. And the staff bring our uh, proceedings almost to a close. Just a few passing thoughts. It's been a wonderful evening. It's been very inspiring. And I hope that everybody watching has enjoyed it as much as I'm sure we all have here. Um, once again, there are just a few people that I really would like to thank. Uh, particularly want to thank everybody who has submitted uh, nominations or casted a vote in this process. We particularly want to thank uh, Mr. Michael Williams and his daughters for helping us to determine the recipient of the Gail Williams Award. Uh, in her absence, we also want to thank Mrs. Veronica Bucknell. Uh, can I thank all of the directors and the non-exec directors who have made the presentations this evening? And finally, Mark, can I thank you also for being a superb host? Uh, an excellent, an excellent evening. Now, since we've been celebrating the best of the best, we are just going to end with uh, one more small item. This year, the um, Ambulance Trust has been listening to feedback from over 4,000 of our staff and our volunteers. And as an organisation, we are committed to new behaviours. And those new behaviours include the behaviours of taking ownership, broadening understanding, respecting others, showing belief in each other, practicing ethically, continuing to improve our services, and of course, to be inclusive to the whole team. Now, we launched a trust-wide search to find colleagues who live and breathe these particular behaviors. And uh, the team have put together a wonderful piece of video to show what this is all about. So to finish this evening, please enjoy this last piece of video. And from all of us at the Welsh Ambulance Service Trust, can I bid you a very good night? I nominated Jo for Take Ownership as I felt she really does demonstrate that behaviour and she really does encourage you to be your best. But at the same time, I feel that Jo is always there to support whenever I need her, but then also encourages me to, you know, go ahead and, and deliver. Obviously, as a result of the pandemic, we've been working from home and remote working. And for me, that just goes to show how we've worked well together. Part of my role is making sure that I deliver the best fleet, the best estate, the best services that we, that we can for, for our patients and our, and our people. Um, and um, taking ownership is a big part of that in just pushing things forward and getting things done. It's really lovely to have been nominated for the Take Ownership Award, but to have won is just, um, you know, I don't feel like I can justify it in a way because there's so many amazing people in WAST who do this every day and display all of our behaviours every day. Um, I'm not sure that I do anything out of the ordinary, but it's incredible and, and it's lovely for the team as well to have that acknowledgement when they work so hard in the background. I nominated Jo for Practice Ethically because when I saw the advert uh, for nomination, she's the first person that came into my mind. And the reason for that was because she's just a caring individual, always thinks of others before herself. Um, and she just takes new staff under her wings. 
when we go on to different jobs, we'll see, we see different types of patients. Um, she always keeps it fair, she always delivers really good patient care. At the same time, looking after us and sort of showing us the lead. I nominate Jo for Practics Ethically because uh, the way that she welcomes everybody in to the UCS role and into the WASH families, as we call it. Jo to us is the oracle to the UCS, or the Google, as I would say. We can ask her a question and she'll come back pretty much straight away with an answer. Excuse the, uh, the phrase, but Jo has really got her finger on the pulse. I nominated Julie for Respect Others because it comes through in everything that she does. She both gives respect and, and garnishes respect from others. She, she really shows that she's respecting people in the way she's listening to them. She listens really deeply and reflects back to people and people feel heard. Living an authentic life is really important to me and a big part of that is how I look after others and look out for others. It's a real honour to have been nominated and to have won the award. Our culture is really important to us and playing a small part in helping to shape that is really important to me. Our service is all about people and for me our behaviours are all about bringing out the best in people. I nominated Liam for broadening our understanding because as a manager within NHS 111 Wales, every time we've had new updates, um, new bulletins, Liam has always made sure that he knows what needs to be done. He's always prepped, his understanding is second to none and he's just very knowledgeable in what he, he does and he just helps everybody in work be the best that they can. Broadening our understanding is very important, especially for the staff that we support on a day-to-day -day basis, because it's important that our staff give the patients that they speak to through NHS 111 the best possible service that they can. Everybody comes to work to do the best job they can do in the time that they've got. Uh, so to win this award for Broadening Our Understanding, it's a great honour and a privilege. So what stands out about Liam is his um, energy. He brings joy and motivation to everybody in the call centre his compassion as well for staff and staff well-being. He's just an all-round good egg. I nominated Lisa for the award in showing belief in each other because Lisa demonstrates this behavior every day in her work, in her life, Everything about her exudes positivity, helpfulness and supportiveness. And it is really about who she is, not just the role, it's about who she is as a person. My role within WAST is to help and support all staff who come under the Welsh Ambulance Umbrella, who may have um, mental health needs or requirements, also physical health requirements. There's so many aspects of the role that I love. The work that we do is, is crucial, absolutely crucial. And to think that the staff have taken the time to do this for me, absolutely amazing and heartfelt. It's a wonderful thing. I nominated Mark for constantly improving our service because he's always been a very, very strong, compassionate team leader. He never loses sight of the respect that he's got to have for his peers. I think the service is as strong as it is because we have people like Mark, somebody who's inspiring, who supports and encourages people to reach their aspirations. I'm extremely humbled. I'm extremely grateful. Um, it's really, really important that I see my staff are happy and with that, our patients will be happy. The patient experience is just continually getting better. And for me, for an ambulance paramedic, there's nothing better. <laughs> Come on. Come on. 
So I nominated Sarah because of the way that you respect everybody and treat everybody equally. It's that real bond and real connection. Yeah. Which I think you're really good at bringing that team ethos. Everybody is is like Sarah's family, really. No, it's I know. And that's the, yes, that's that's the lovely thing. You do you don't realise what you're doing, but not everybody's like yeah, you. If you enjoy your job, this is how you should be, I suppose. When I found out, I was just overwhelmed. You know that some somebody special had uh, nominated me. So no, thank you very much. Got me cut. <laughs> you know, never mind making you cry. I'm crying. Louise, I nominated you for best of our best because, you know, you displayed every behaviour that we've got in our behaviours. You helped me to understand the world of IPC in a lovely way. You know, you were challenged on so many occasions by people, really pressured situation, and you never lost your cool. Always did things with dignity, respect for everyone, and it was just a pleasure to work with you during that time. Patients rely on us to do our best mm -hmm. when they are literally at their most vulnerable mm -hmm. time and they rely on our expertise and they put so much trust in us. It's very easy to be your best when you've got lots of people surrounding you that allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of the work that we did in the last few months of recovery that I wouldn't have been able to do if you hadn't been there. It's only you can set your standard and it's only you can have those internal values and it's only you who can demonstrate them.